he'd struck it more viciously, then this might have ended up differently. Yes, yeah, perfect layoff for him, and it's on his right foot. I think he just tries to, to make sure and side foot it in, but uh, as you can see there, he's got all the goal, virtually all the goal to aim at, and it's just disappointing he went straight to the keeper, but uh, uh, Reigns had a good spell of pressure at that time. It was a good layoff by Dave McPherson. McCall again, very much involved, sending through McCoy, and this this another chance for Rangers, Davy. Yes, well, Stuart McCall, as always, is very, very busy, um, does a lot of work. A great little flick there. I thought at first Alan McCoy had been offside, but he was played on, had a nice chance again, and the keepers got back to, to thwart him. Lovely flick, flick wasn't it? Actually, uh, number 11, Ian Durant, looked offside there, mm -hmm. but uh, we got away with it. The keeper's actually done well to come out and block that, so uh, yep. all credit yeah. to the goalkeeper there. Terry, what about this man, like Gert Verheyen? He, now, he looks a bit troublesome as far as the Rangers defenders are concerned. He kept on breaking, he looks a real danger man. Yeah, I think Richard Goff uh, slipped there early and he's, he's through here. Andy Gorham stands up really well. I think gets a touch and uh, Rangers actually fortunately get a, get a goal kick. But uh, I think actually when he's bearing down on goal, the sight of Andy Gorham's trousers there put him off. <laughs> and, and, and he's wearing flares tonight for the, for some reason, so I think they... OK, again, McCoyst with a chance. Uh, well, let's have a look at that. McCoyst, McCoyst <laughs> with a chance. Here yeah, we go, Davey, what do you make of this one? had a lot of chances tonight, but this was, this was probably the best one in the match. This was a great chance for Ali. He's stretched at it and tried to put it in at the far post, but just missed it. Uh, he'll be disappointed with that, he didn't at least get that on target. But uh, he was very unlucky. Difficult one. OK, well, time for another short break there. In a couple of minutes, more analysis from a fairly dramatic first half, followed by the second half live of Rangers against Bruges. Hello again, we're discussing the eventful first half, Rangers against FC Bruges. It's 1-0 Rangers at the moment. Terry, the breakthrough, Durant's goal, 39 minutes. It was a great one. Yeah, it was a great bit of football by, by Rangers on, the, on a very difficult service. It was like really real silky soccer at its best here. Good layoff by Mark Hadley, lovely ball by Trevor Stevens. Good collection by Ian Durant. As, as Davey said, I mean, Davey was saying here, when, when the ball's played through here, his touch, and then he hits the ball virtually in one movement. He's taken and hit it so early. Um, defender and the goalkeeper didn't have a chance. Considering the conditions, uh, it was a marvellous through ball and a great goal. So, great moment there, then a horrendous moment, uh, especially for Mark Hately. What, what did you think of this, Terry? He's sent off now. Is this a harsh decision? Oh, a very harsh decision, I think, um, if you look at it in the, in the replay here. Well, in, in normal speed, he just pushes the man away. I think there's initially two men round him, and the man here, like, appeals and grabs Mark. Mark just pushes him away. There's nothing more than the innocuous push away, but unfortunately, if you raise your hands in, you know, especially European games, referees, um, the referees from Poland, so he's got a different interpretation of the yeah. rules, and uh, he's obviously deemed that as like throwing a punch or whatever. It's, you know, it's it's it's, a, it's tragic for Rangers because you know, having gone one 0 up, they they looked as though they were going to go on to you know at least um, yeah. either either score or, or hold that lead. So. As as Gordon McQueen rightly said, though, Davy, our friend from Bruges made the most of it, to say the least. <laughs> Certainly, I think it's a complete overreaction uh, by the referee. The, the whole game they were having a tussle, um, but look here, I mean, the, the Bruce defender puts his arm around Mark Hately's neck, he, he really has only shoved him away. Um, it's a complete overreaction and, and one that's spoiled the game. So, Rangers one up, they're without Mark Hately now, down to ten men. The teams are coming back out at Ibrox. Let's go back now for the whole of the second half live and rejoin Jerry McNee. And welcome back to Ibrox Stadium. Uh, Bruges out on the field and a uh, quick check there shows that uh, they've made no changes and Walter Smith and Archie Knox would certainly have plenty to say to their players during the interval so this will be a difficult second half for Rangers there's no doubt about that down to ten men and psychologically knowing that uh, with a big game against Marseille coming up in three weeks time they will be without Mark Catley well, Ian Durant is also on a yellow card, so too is Scott Nisbet and uh, Alex Mikhailichenko, who's on the bench, also on a yellow card. So Rangers will not want to inflict any further damage on themselves. But uh, I would say on the matter that uh, Hitler certainly raised his hand and uh, European referees have uh, one answer for that. It's always a red card. And again, you've got to say in Hitler's case, he's a highly experienced player. And the low tussles were going on uh, earlier in the game between himself and Kossi. Uh, he really should have known better. So it's still no sign of Rangers. What do you think, Walter has uh, been sent in at half-time, Gordon? 
Well, they're going to have to work doubly hard, obviously, for, to compensate for uh, Mark Daly sending off. And I think the crowd could play a vital part in this second half. Maybe they could be the 11th man because um, it's a heavy surface. Um, Rangers have played an awful lot of games of late and it's going to be doubly difficult for them in the second half because obviously they've seen Bruce in the first half and they were certainly a potent attacking force. Well, Rangers certainly rode the luck at times in that first half but then it all seemed to be going their way when Ian Durant scored after 39 minutes after being brilliantly set up by Trevor Stephen. But it all went sharp in the minutes leading up to half-time. So it's 10-man Rangers about to kick off in the second half. So the crowd getting right behind them. Rangers unbeaten in European football this season. They beat Lingbe and Leeds home and away. They drew here with Marseille. They beat CSKA Moscow in neutral bottom and the drew in Bruges a couple of weeks ago it's absolutely vital that uh, they win here tonight to keep alive their hopes but it's going to be a long second half especially with this man Amakechi racing at the heart of the Rangers defence so the Polish referee Michal Bocic well he's handled matches involving Benfica and Real Madrid this season and uh, he handled the Denmark Republic of Ireland World Cup tie in October and I know he's highly regarded by UEFA he's just 36 years of age and uh, one of the new breed coming through a lot of referees have been lost to the game recently because the uh, age has been lowered the retirement age has been lowered the Rangers will be looking to Ali McCoyce now in this second half to lift them further Another goal would take a, a lot of pressure off Rangers. So this is Goff. And Ian Durant will no doubt play in a slightly more positive role in the second half. But, uh, McCoyce will need plenty of support. And of course with the Belgian stringing five men across the middle of the park. It will also make it difficult for Rangers in that area. Rangers' greater strength told a couple of weeks ago. So Walter Smith will be looking for full commitment in the second half. So this is Nisbet. It's uh, way by Borkelmans. In comes Murray. And Murray picking up plenty of European experience now, having played against Marseille here the whole game and he wins the free kick he also played in Bruges a fortnight ago so we're picking up plenty of European experience yeah, that's good play for an inexperienced youngster here just holding the ball up holding the ball up until he tries to get some support from Trevor Stephen who's in foul and Rangers will get the free kick and it's Trevor Stephen who takes it and it was uh, Stallings who got his head to the ball and it's behind for the corner Uh, Frankie van der Els, the Bruges skipper, a player who has more than 50 caps for Belgium. So Rangers keep the pressure on. McPherson's up there with Brown. Goff's moved in there as well. It's Goff who gets his head to the ball, but it drifts behind for the goal kick. So McPherson and Goff. Moving forward there to join John Brown. This is Van der Elst. And the crowd are uh, doing Van der Elst, but it, uh, it was actually Rudy Cossey uh, who got involved with Haefeli. Van der Elst was in there as well. And so too with Stalins. And uh, there's certainly a feeling among the Rangers fans at halftime that there was overreaction from the Belgian player when Haefeli was sent off. And this is Durant to Trevor Stephen. Good first time ball to Scott Nisbet. 
Stephen again. And uh, Bockelman's reacted quickly, and he concedes the throw in. And again, the crowd roaring. Stephen trying to get forward. The turn by Goff. This is Van der Elst. Looking for the pace of Amikachi. And uh, Gorham reacts well. That's a good ball to Ellie McCoy. McCoy racing through here. Down he goes. No penalty, says the referee. He was challenged by Laszlo Distel, the Hungarian defender. The referee was well behind the plate, but immediately ruled out penalty kick, waving his arms near, waving play on well it's difficult to tell, I mean it was good chest control initially from Ali McCoy, they're fighting one another, looks as if Distel's trying to get his hand claw Ali McCoy's back and he may well have given a penalty kick in that situation well looking at that replay I think he got it right I think uh, just a little bit of a dive by McCoy. And here's the chance on now for Stalins. And Lorenzo Stalins pulls it back for Club Bruges. Well, he stole forward, found himself space inside the penalty area. And now it's all going wrong for Rangers. Yeah, well, this is terrible. A couple of minutes before half time, a couple of minutes after, and it's all went horribly along. There's bound to be cracks appear in the Rangers' defence when you're playing with 10 men. And unfortunately, Stalins finished that one off. Nobody picked him up here with his run into the penalty box. Controlled it with his right, looked in, and poked it into the bottom corner of the net. So Rangers have it all to do again. Ten men against eleven. And Bruce really looking in the mood now. This is Verheyen. And John Brown's in trouble now. For his foul on Verheyen. And the yellow card is shown to Brown. So that puts him under pressure for the rest of the match. And the referee standing, no nonsense. Yeah, the head's breaking away here, and I think the referee's seen this one as a tackle from behind. John Brown just, just knocks him off the ball there. Not a particularly vicious tackle, but a foul nevertheless, and um, obviously the referee said it was a book of, book of defence. Well, Bruce certainly giving the impression in the last five minutes or so that they can go on and win this match. That was McCoy uh, just a few minutes ago, but uh, as I said at the time, I think the referee got that one right. So, difficult times these for Rangers. This is Borkelman sending it through, it's Stalins in there again, and then the ball goes behind. It's important that Rangers keep their discipline, because as we've seen before, I mean, the game against Marseille here at Ibrox, I mean, two goals down, of what, how long to go, nobody gave Rangers a prayer, and yet they managed to get a point out, but there's no reason for the tremendous team spirit they've got here at Ibrox that they can't go, even with ten men, and get a winning goal. First of all, they have to get through this difficult spell, and that's uh, the kind of challenge they need to come to that, and uh, play on, says the referee. But he might have a word with uh, van der Hayden. He's uh, giving the advantage to Rangers here. That's Gasson sending it clear now to Amakachi. It looks as though it could uh, be very much the Rangers' disadvantage, but that's McCall stepping in, playing it to Brown, taking the return. Gasson's giving chase, Krev is back there as well. So McCall keeping possession, battling away, and he gets a free kick. So it's all down to that word, character now. Free kick taken, McCoy's in there, and the ball goes behind for the goal kick. very much on his own up front since the ordering off of Mark Catley <laughs> and uh, the 
referee is having a word with Amikirchi, telling him to cut out the play acting. Nick Person sending it forward. And away by Kose. This is Brown. And that goes beyond uh, Trevor Stephen and behind for the goal kick. Well, Bruges with the extra man now can afford uh, to push the likes of Stalins forward and uh, he's quite comfortable when he moves through there. But, uh, very much an all-round player, he can play in defence and midfield or up front. And uh, there's certainly be a fresh problem for Rangers in the second half. Uh, push forward at every opportunity, that's him running just ahead of uh, Amakachi there, wearing the number nine. So 55 minutes gone, and it's Rangers 1, Club Rouge 1. Durant for Rangers in 39 minutes, and Stalins in the 50th minute for Bruges. And that's Borkelmans who sends the ball out of play for the throw to Rangers. Beetle Borkelmans, who has seven caps for Belgium. Again, his career as a striker, but uh, plays in a more defensive role these days. This is Richard Goff. Voice in there alone again. He does well to get possession. First time ball from Trevor Stephen, and uh, they come off Posse. Well, the referee is deeming that that was not a pass, a pass back, and he's quite correct. The ball come off the defender, and that allows the goalkeeper to pick it up. But uh, terrific play by McCoyst, surrounded by Bruges players. It was a first time ball from Trevor Stephen. It come off the defender. That's accidental, and in that kind of situation, the goalkeeper can pick it up. Well, Jerry, that's accidental as well, but he's given the foul against John Brown there. I mean, a little bit of inconsistency here in the referee. I agree with you that Cosse made an attempt to clear that ball, but he's penalised John Brown in the same situation there. So the free kick to be taken by De Still. Just it down by Amakachi. That's a fine shot from Stefan van der Heden, and well handled by Andy Gorham. Yeah, he strikes this one well, gets over it, but really not enough power in it to trouble Andy Gorham. So it's Borkelmans. Oh, and this bit really his head to the ball. Played through by McCall. It's certainly an advantage on an evening such as this with rain still falling to have the extra man. We have two defenders on McCoy's now. We have that luxury. And that's uh, Stallings, who's well forward again, but uh, a free kick goes Rangers' way. The flag had been up on the far side. Uh, Stallings broke forward. And the ball come off the head of Goff. And the linesman is pointing out for a corner. Well, it certainly looked as if the ball came up. Richard Goff, but Rangers need all the breaks they can get. Uh, players were walking away there thinking it was uh, a goal kick, but uh, the linesman pointed towards the corner flag. And the corner it is. The downward header, and another terrific save by Van Linden. Well, McCoyce was in there. Uh, great instinctive save by the keeper and uh, the break on here. This is Trevor. Rangers getting players back. It's Van der Elst. This is St Stellens. Bortelmans. 
Hand up hidden. That goes behind for the corner to Bruges. So everyone except Danny Van Linden inside the Rangers half. And Hayden who takes it. And missed there by Lorenzo Stallings. And it comes again though. And the header going in from Laszlo Distel, the sweeper, who had allowed himself to come forward. So that's 60 minutes gone, Rangers 1, Club Rouge 1. On a night like this, you would be looking to Richard Goff to lift his team, but uh, I think he's a big enough problem tonight, getting himself back into this match after his lengthy absence. Switch of play from Schassens. The crew by Bortelmans to Van der Hayden. Blocked by Nisbet, and that's a throw to Club Rouge. They are beginning to find a little bit of space, particularly in the middle of the park, Bruges, but that's understandable when they're playing against ten men. That's a foul throw, but uh, play on to the referee. It's Van der Hayden leaving it now to Amakechi. Switch of play to Peter Krever. Through now for Skessens. Uh, Gorham knows there's no point in heaving it straight up the field because uh, there are no fewer than three Bruges defenders around Ali McCoyst. So he waits until some support arrives. He and Durant's up there now, but uh, he's out jumped by Cossey. This is Verheyen. This cue by Skessens, but Amakachi is over there. Now it's Trevor. Goff steps in for Rangers. This is Durant. Rangers need a lot from him in the second half. He almost gives it away though. That's Trevor Stephen to Nisbet. Stephen again. Cruz with plenty of players back behind the ball. Played in looking for McCoyst. This is Verheyen who clears. Persons won, won against Anakechi, although Goff is getting back. Well, this is a problem for Rangers. Stallings is forward with Anakechi. Still it's Anakechi, the ball takes a deflection and goes behind for the corner kick. Well, Rangers in all kinds of trouble there. Yeah, good play by Anakechi because it was him that won the ball initially in the centre of the, in the, centre of the part against David McPherson and broke clear there. Managed to get his shot in but uh, took a little bit of a deflection. We've got a corner kick now. And that's McPherson's clearance only as far as Van der Elst. This is Skessens. Way by Murray. Returned by Van der Elst. So McCall having to stretch for it. And uh, the first time shot from Stefan van der Hayden. Going behind for the goal kick. But again, the breaking qualities of Amakechi very much on short, and he got in the shot there, it took a deflection, and uh, put Andy Gorham in a bit of trouble. This is Amakechi again, comes well against McPherson, and it's McCall who has to go back and battle for it. The support arriving now from Van der Elst, and that's Rangers ball. I said earlier, Jerry, I didn't think it was impossible that Rangers could win this game, but uh, it really is maybe asking far too much when you consider the amount of games that they've had to play this season in, the, in this league programme that we play here, which is fine for the smaller clubs, but for clubs like Rangers that are involved in all cup competitions, Skull Cup, Scottish Cup, and the European Cup, it's just no good at all. Well, tonight is Rangers' 49th game of the season. And of course, a good number of those players have also been involved in international duty.
That's played through now to Nisbet. This is Trevor Stephen. Nisbet again. Again, Bruges with plenty of players behind the ball. And that's a throw in to Bruges. Seventh appearance of the season tonight for Trevor Stephen. It's been a, an in and out season for him. He's had his injuries to contend with. Well, Rangers come back in adversity in a similar type of evening against Marseille, but uh, on that occasion they did have 11 men on the field. So 65 minutes gone. Rangers 1, Bruges 1, this is Durant, and it's hooked away by Trevor, with McCoy's coming in at the far post, Ian Durant did ever so well, and that was a superb play by Peter Trevor. Yeah, very, very intelligent ball here being Durant, spots Ali McCoy at the back post, and nearly gets through to him, but Trevor, in a defensive situation, knocks the ball away for a corner kick, very close indeed. Goff's up there, but it's headed away by Van der Els. This is McCall coming in. He's blocked again by Trevor. This is Stalins through to Amakachi. Bruges pouring men forward now. Rangers trying to get back. Played wide for Borkelmans, but a complete breakdown there. Well, Verheyen obviously did not know that Borkelmans was there. Well, that's the story of the evening so far. One goal apiece. Durant for Rangers and Stalins for Bruges. This is McCoyst, but no one there in support. It's uh, Alexei Mikhailichenko down beside the dugout, but uh, no sign of him coming on yet. Attempting for Rangers to push people through in support of McCoy's, but it'll leave them so bare in the middle of the park. So they have to be patient. The important thing for them tonight is not to lose this game. There's Brown. Pushing forward, good time to get away from Trevor. And that's a yellow card for Trevor. Yeah, there's, no, there's no question about this, a good positive run forward by John Brown here. A lunge in by Trevor. Takes the legs away from John Brown and a booking for him. So that's a 